Hey everyone, this is Nate Strout at the University of Redlands and the Center for Spatial Studies. And today we're going to be looking at uh, how to do some basic measurements with aerial photographs. All right, so first of all, all of the photos we're going to use here were downloaded from uh, USGS's Earth Explorer website. Um, and I put them all together, all the ones that we use here in this, this little demo, um, into a zip file that you can download from this site here. All right, so this first one we're going to look at is of uh, the city of Redlands. It should look familiar to my students. Um, you can see the University of Redlands right here in the middle. I'll kind of get down here a little bit more. You can see that. Um, the, uh, the big thing that you might notice here is that um, the building I'm sitting in here, Lewis Hall, along with all the other science buildings, Around here is just a big open grass field, so kind of an interesting one. Uh, this is from uh, 1994. You can see that here from June 1st, 1994. Um, it actually has the exact time on it. There's a little clock up there if we look at that. Um, and uh, this is from the National Aerial Photography Program. It's a national program. Um, um, and uh, uh, a couple of things to notice here, are these fiducial markings here. So those help us find the exact center of the photo. Notice the principal point. If we kind of drew a line between each one of those, we'd find the exact center of this photo, which would put us around here, which is pretty close to the university, which is why I picked this one, uh, just because it will have minimal distortion, uh, because we're pretty close to that, that center point here. Uh, another thing about NAP, this National Area Photography Program is that these are all taken at a 1 to 40,000 scale. Okay. So, uh, what does that mean? It's a term we, the scale is a term we use a lot in GIS mapping. Um, I want to make sure that that is clear. So, what that, what that is, is that it's a representat representative fraction of the photo distance to the distance on the ground. Okay, so that means that every one millimeter or whatever unit we want to use, if we want to use inches, uh, one millimeter, that's my ruler, on this photo is equal to 40,000 millimeters uh, on the ground. One inch would be one inch in this photo is equal to 40,000 inches. You know, millimeters and inches wouldn't make a lot of sense for us to tell somebody the size of something on the ground. Um, but we can convert that to something that's a little bit more useful. So, um, so this is a this is a one to forty thousand uh, scale uh, map. So let's let's use that information to actually do some some measurements here. Um, so I'm going to use a little transparency paper to mess up my image here. Um, and what I want to do is look at. Look at campus. Oh, sorry about that glare. Kind of rid of that there. Um, look at campus right here. Okay, and lots lots of change. Lots has changed, but um, uh, we can still see pretty clearly this um, this road right here, which is kind of from a university over here to to Grove. Um, and so I just want to I want to measure that um, measure that distance on here. Um, so I'm just going to get my ruler and look at that measurement. Um, I'm going to say that's about 16, maybe you know, 15 and a half, something like that. Um, let's just say 16 for make this easier to do some math. So that's going to be 16 millimeters. Okay. Now we know that the scale is 40,000. And that's kind of unitless. We can apply it to any unit we want. So 16 millimeters, my handy dandy calculator here. So I said 16 millimeters times 40,000 is going to be equal to 640,000, that's still in the same unit, millimeters. Okay. Now, if I told you that the street was 640,000 millimeters long, you wouldn't know what to do with that. So, uh, 
Um, so first of all, I can convert that to meters pretty easily, right? We can just move, so the way metric is so great, we can just move that decimal point over, and I could say that, no, that is going to be 640 meters long. Now, we are dumb Americans that don't know what that means, so we need to convert that to feet. And uh, to do that, that conversion is 3.281. So I can just take that number times 3.281. And uh, that'll give us a number of me, 640 times 3.281 is equal to 2,099.8 feet. Right, so now we know the length of, of that road just by um, Doing some measurements. So, you know, that would, you know, um, back in the 80s or I guess 90s when this was was taken, you know, um, uh, you know, pre GPS, um, this would be a, a much easier way to do that than to actually get out and do do some real physical measurements on the ground, right? Um, okay, so let's let's use that information here to to do a little bit more. Let's let's do an area measurement. Um, clean that for you. And let's go ahead and measure uh, the quad here, okay? So um, it's our kind of big grass quad at the, the university here. Um, so I'm going to measure kind of from a line of trees on one side to the other side. Let's just say that that is four millimeters, okay? And I'll measure this way. I see that's five millimeters. Okay, so let's just take those measurements and just a little bit um, and convert them to uh, to ground measurements. So four times forty thousand is equal to. 160,000 millimeters. Oops. Uh, five times 40,000 is equal to 200,000 millimeters. Okay. And so um, let's go ahead and just convert those so I have smaller numbers to work with into meters. So that's going to be 160 meters to 200 meters. And so I can just figure out the area of that. 160 times 200 is equal to 32,000 square meters. And if we want to figure that out in feet, uh, the factor there is 10.76. So if we multiply that, 32,000 square meters times point, I mean 10.76, we'll get um, 34,432. I'm sorry, 344,320 square feet. All right, so, you know, we've got either one of those is, is going to be correct. Um, and, you know, so we were able to use that scale to, to calculate um, areas as well as distances, as long as we have something easy to calculate areas by. So rectangles are nice and easy, circles would be nice and easy. Um, and so on. Okay, so now let's take a look at something else here. All right, so now we'll take a look at this image of San Francisco. There's the Golden Gate Bridge here uh, from June 11th, 1952. Uh, so now we're looking at a program called GIMP, which is basically just a free version of, of Photoshop. Uh, it's just a photo editor tool. Uh, no, no GIS really here. Um, 
It's got a lot of great tools. All we're really using here is the zoom in, zoom out, and a, a measurement tool, um, which is you know easy to use. It uh, lets us you know zoom in and take a little bit more precise measurements, which will be helpful than just using our, our ruler. Um, so uh, this wasn't part of a national program, so it doesn't you know, has kind of a different scale to it. Um, if we look up this in the Earth Explorer site, um, we can find what the scale is. So this is uh, 73,821, so kind of a uh, unique scale there. Um, and we'll use that to just measure the Golden Gate Bridge here. So we'll just measure between the towers. So I'm just going to zoom in nice and tight. So, you know, much better than just using our ruler on a 9 by 9 um, uh, photo. So I'm just going to grab this measurement tool. Um, if you're using a Mac, this will be a little bit different place, but it'll have the same icon. Um, it might be hiding behind the color picker. It's kind of in the same... Uh, tool there. And then I'm just going to uh, drag from one tower to the other tower, kind of in the middle. And by default, you see it shows me pixels as a distance here. Uh, using pixels here, I need to, we can change that using the drop down to millimeters. We can change it to inches. We can change it to anything we want. So this is telling me that it's 18.46 millimeters. Okay. And we know that the scale is 73,821. Right, so uh, let me just pull up my little calculator here. So that is going to be 18.46 times 7, 73,821. Oops. 73,821. So that tells me we got 1.3 million millimeters in this here. And so if we want to find that out in meters, you know, that's nice. We can look at this and just say, well, it's 1,362 meters or 1 1.3 kilometers. Um, and if we want to convert that to feet, we know we can just multiply. I'm going to divide that by 1,000 real quick to get our... Uh, distance in meters, and we know we can multiply that times 3.281 to get our meters, I mean our feet, so now we know uh, that that is 4,471 feet. So yeah, nice to be able to use this tool, uh, do a little bit more uh, precise measurements here. All right, so now let's take a look at our Seattle photo um, and use this as an example to look at a photo where we don't actually know what the scale is. So this was created outside of any of the national programs, so we don't really know what the scale is. The scale is probably written on the back of the photo, um, but that wasn't included in the scan. Um, you could probably look it up in the metadata. Uh, metadata can be wrong from time to time, so it's common enough that you'll actually have a photo that you don't know the scale and need to determine that scale. And the best way to do that is to find something in the image that you already know what the distance is. The best example of that is some of the football field, some athletic field that you can measure. Um, another great way to do that anymore is to simply uh, measure something in the photo and look at what the distance is in um, something like Google Maps or ArcGIS Online to go figure out what the actual distance is and then and apply the, um, apply the scale that way. So um, in this photo, conveniently enough, we have a, uh, a football field. So we're, we're right next to the Space Needle here. You can see the shadow. Uh, this football field doesn't exist anymore. Luckily, we have it in this photo so we can use it. Um, so in this example, we know that from end zone to end zone, is 100 yards. Um, so we'll go ahead and measure uh, from end zone to end zone. Okay. And we can see down here uh, we are at 7.72 millimeters. And now we know that 7.72 millimeters is the same as 100 yards. Now we just need to kind of put that into a representative fraction where we have 
you know, one to something as an actual scale. Um, and so um, we just need to solve for that. Um, so first part of that is actually to put them both on the same scale. So let's take those yards, 100 yards, figure out how many, um, uh, how many millimeters that is. So I'm just going to use the easiest way. I know how is open this up in, uh, in Google. And let's just type in 100 yards, 2 millimeters. Right? So now we know that um, three, no, 7.72 millimeters in our photo is equivalent to 91,440 millimeters on the ground. Easy enough. So now we just have to turn that into a 1 to something. Um, and the way we do that is basically take this number, um, uh, this ground measurement number here, um, over the photo unit, uh, photo measurement, um, and, and do that math. So we're going to take 91,440. We're going to take 91,440 divided by 7.72. And that gives us 11,844. Round that to about 12,000. So this is a, a 1 to 12,000 uh, scaled image. All right, so so far we've looked a lot at measuring distances, measuring lengths in our photos. Um, and uh, now we'll look at something that is pretty interesting, and that is to measure heights in photos. So the heights of buildings, the heights of trees, stuff like that. Um, and we've got two different methods to do that. Uh, first would be to take advantage of um, it's often called the building lean, it's the relief displacement, the radial displacement of uh, how much buildings appear to be leaning um, away from the center of the photo. And you'll see this uh, photos taken over uh, a lot of skyscrapers or something um, that buildings seem to be leaning away from the center of the photo, the principal point. So we can actually use that to do uh, uh, height measurements if we know the altitude of the plane. Um, and so in this example here, we're looking at uh, Manhattan, and we'll be using the Twin Towers uh, to do some measurements. So this photo is from uh, the 70s, um, <clears throat> and you can see the Twin Towers pretty clearly here, and they stand out really well. The shadow is pretty clear here, and that displacement is going to be pretty easy to measure. Uh, that was a little too much. Uh, we can see how much it's leaning away. Now, so the formula for this is that the we're going to find the height of the building by measuring the length of this displaced um, building. So you know the top of this building should be directly over this, <laughs> over the bottom, uh, the base of it. So that's the displacement distance. We're going to measure from the top of that displaced object, the building, back to the principal point. And we're going to include uh, the uh, uh, the height of the camera, or the altitude. So that is the height. Uh, height is equal to the uh, displaced object times the altitude over the radial distance. Okay, so it's displayed there on the screen for you. Um, so let's let's figure that out. So first of all, let's just measure um, in millimeters. Measure this building here right up the side, nice and easy. And that says it's 2.03 millimeters. Right. Now I need to measure back to the principal point. Now in GIMP, here, um, we can actually put rulers in, which are nice, nice feature. If we grab from the top ruler here, we can kind of pull it down. And I'm just going to line it up right across the middle here. And I just leave it there. And I'll grab this one and pull this over to the middle. And now, so the principal point's right here. So we're going to measure from the top of the Twin Towers to uh, the principal point. So 
zoom in close here so you can see that. Grab the top and we can just kind of drag till we find the principal point. We'll see those lines coming across. There's a Statue of Liberty and here's the mid layer. Okay, so that tells us it's 59.53 millimeters or 59.39 millimeters back to the principal point. So that is the R in our in our formula there. And the last bit of information we need is the altitude. So that happens to be 39,000 feet. Um, now, so we have all the bits of information we need now. We need to convert some units and, and do the math here. So the first bit of this is that 39,000 units is, I mean, 39,000 feet is uh, is in feet. We need that to be in millimeters to match up. So to do that, we'll use Google again uh, and use 39, 39,000 feet is 11.8 million millimeters. Um, uh, the rest of our units are already in in meters, so we should be good to go here. All right, so we can do the math now. So we're going to take um, the uh, displaced distance, 2.03 times the altitude in millimeters, 11895000. And we're going to take all that divided by the distance back to the principal point which is 59.71. And so this is our height in millimeters. So in meters, we're just going to move that over. So 404 meters. And then feet. So I'm just going to divide this by 1,000. So 404 meters. And then again for feet, we just multiply that by 3.281. And we end up with 1326.8 feet. All right. So pretty cool that we were able to do that, that height measurement. That's a that's pretty close to our actual um, to the actual height of the, the Twin Towers to the top of the building, not including the, the tower. So uh, pretty cool we're able to do that just you know using that displacement. Uh, now we're going to look at how to do that with, uh, with, sh with shade. Uh, so we have a lot of shade on this image here, but we're going to go ahead and use a different image uh, so we can uh, get some more practice using some dim uh, different photographs. All right, so let's take a look at this photo of uh, Washington, D.C. Um, this was taken in uh, 1983 on July 9th. Um, it has a scale of 1 to 17,000. Um, on this side, uh, there's some other information, including the date, which we'll look at in a minute here. Um, and uh, you should also notice that this is a near-infrared composite because of the really red tint to it. Um, and that redness is indicating the health of vegetation uh, because it's uh, reflecting more near-infrared light. Um, so now when we're calculating building heights using shadows, uh, one uh, challenge is often uh, that in a densely populated or densely urban area with lots of skyscrapers, other buildings, um, a lot of times that shadow is being draped over other building so it can be challenging to measure the, the shadow. Uh, this is conveniently in a big open field and so we can do this pretty easily. Um, so when we're using shadows to measure height we're really doing a little bit of trigonometry um, where the, the ground is forming uh, one side of that triangle and the building is forming uh, the right angle of that, that triangle. And so um, we're trying to solve for that that other side. 
Um, and to do that, we need to know um, uh, we need to know the distance, the length of the side on the ground. Um, and the other bit of information we need to know is that angle. Um, and we can actually calculate that by looking up the angle of the sun on that day and time that the photo was taken. So a uh, pretty cool little uh, bit of math here. So the first thing we need to know here is the length of this adjacent side, the one on the ground here. Um, and we can figure that out pretty easily using the methods we've already looked at. So I'll just grab my measurement tool. Let's just measure from the tip up here all the way down to the tip on the ground. All right? And that tells us it's 13.56 millimeters. So now we're going to use the scale to figure out what the actual length of that shadow is. So you might remember that was the scale is 17,000. So the actual length of the shadow on the ground is 230,520 millimeters. All right. Um, and now we need to know the the angle of the sun so we know how the shadow is being cast and ultimately what the angle is uh, down here uh, to, to finish up our equation. Um, so we can easily find on the web now uh, what the angle of the sun was on a given day on a given time. Um, so we need to know what day this photo was taken and what time. So you might remember down here in the corner we knew the day which was July 9th, 1983. And on the right side of the image is the time, uh, this middle one here. So it's 9.16 AM. So we can use this pretty cool website from NOAA to go find that, um, that angle. Um, so first of all, we just need to set the location. Um, we can click on DC here to kind of get us started. And let's zoom in here. We'll get nice and tight and actually find um, the Washington Monument here. And then we need to put in the date and time. So that was July 9th, 1983. And the time was 9 16. And that set all of these, the result here about that date and time. Um, the one we're interested in is this one on the right, which was is the solar elevation, uh, which will give us that, that angle. Uh, this one also is an interesting one just to kind of check that we have everything right. Um, you can show the azimuth, which is where it is, what angle it is kind of on the horizon. So from zero to 360. Um, and we can see where the sun is coming from. Um, and if we can kind of line that up to our picture, and so it's kind of coming from the east, it should make a shadow going due west kind of towards the reflecting pool. So let's just check that and make sure that um, that, that looks accurate. Now this photo isn't oriented north-south, um, but you can see that that's you know, facing pretty much at the, uh, at the reflecting pool there, um, a little uh, north uh, north of that but that looks like that would be the right uh, the right numbers here so we can kind of trust this 37.36 all right so now we have all the numbers we need to plug into our formula here so let's just use google's calculator you can use any calculator you just need to make sure you have a tangent function uh, you need to make sure that your calculator is in degrees since we have the degrees um, of that angle um, that we use for the solar angle. So uh, first of all, let's put in our uh, the length of the shadow. So it would be 230,520 millimeters times the tangent of that angle. So that was 37.36. And that right there is the height um, in millimeters. Okay, so 175.9 um, thousand millimeters um, divided by a thousand. It's going to give us our meters. And times 3.281 is in feet. 
that's uh, pretty darn close to the height of the of the Washington Monument. Our numbers are a little bit higher because we didn't actually take into account the the pyramid at the top, the angle of the pyramid on the top, uh, but pretty good for using shadows and an old photo from the 80s. All right, so we've covered some basic measurements you can do with area photographs. Uh, we looked at length measurements using scale uh, and area measurements, and we also looked at two different ways of, of measuring heights. So um, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.